Hey guys, how's it going? Clayton Modos here, and welcome to a video talking mainly about bearings. So, as every gearhead and garage mechanic knows, um, needle bearings are the worst kind of bearings in existence. They suck to put in, they suck to take out, and if you drop them, the needles go everywhere, and you always lose one. So today we're going to try and make your experience with at least the suspension bearings of a dirt bike a little bit easier and a little, hopefully a little bit less painful for you guys. So let's get right into it. So this is the first suspension piece we're going to be working on. We don't really have a we don't really have a technical name for it here in the garage, but we call the other piece the dog bone, so we call this the wishbone. So we're just going to take out all of the um, pieces here that hold it in place. Bit rusty. Alright, so the next thing we're gonna do is take out all these sleeves and seals so we can just have the bearings there in place. There's the little cap that goes on the end. Then we can just push all this out this way since we aren't gonna be reusing any of this. There's the sleeve. Now we just have the bearings. Might be a washer here. Yep. Just like that. And the other side. And the procedure is the same for the top section. Okay. So now we've gotten to just the bearings right there. And the secret weapon to this part specifically is there's no lip in the middle. It just it's just a hole that goes straight through. And so you have to set the gap of the bearings when you put them in. But for getting them out, all that gives us is a really easy way to do that. So let's get into it. So we're gonna open up our vise all the way and then we're gonna set this um, with the end of the vise that's gonna be pushing, it's gonna push on the socket itself. And in our case, this is a 19. We're gonna use a deep well because it'll go all the way through with a little bit of space left. So we're gonna set it right on the edge of the bearing and make sure that you aren't pressing on this metal outer, um, outer section you want to make sure you're pressing on the bearing itself. And then you're going to tighten up here and keep, make sure to still keep an eye on that, on where the where your bearing is. When you're heating up, there's a couple different techniques on how to get it to the right temperature. If you drop water on it and it sizzles, you're at the right temperature, or you can use a little IR thermometer and get it to about 230 or 240 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you do this, you want to make sure you work all the way around the bearing and not just focus on one place in particular. So for now we're looking at about 160, so we're gonna keep working. We're running right about 230 now, so we're gonna give this a um, couple twists here and you should hear the bearing break free. There it was. Mm. And so now you're just going to keep pushing on it and usually you're going to need some kind of extension on your little handle here. So we like to use the um, socket and breaker bar approach um, which can be can get a little bit tricky because the head swivels here but usually it works pretty well. That's, um, so. That works. There it goes. All right. Now just imagine how difficult that would have been to get out if you were just beating on it with a hammer. So now we're pushing the bearing into the other bearing and using it as even more leverage to get everything to come free. So we're gonna add a little bit more heat now to make sure that the other bearing is free and ready to move. So I just noticed that we have achieved the next stage of our bearing removal. And I'm wearing a glove. This isn't a heat rated glove, but it is something and it'll give me a little bit of protection. Better than nothing. And there go all the needles. So, as you can see, we've pushed the other bearing to be even here. So if we keep pushing, it's just gonna push it against the actual, um, 
What's this called? Vice. Vice. <laughs> so we have to put a socket on it so that we can drop the bearing into the socket. So the biggest one that we have right now is a 27. And that, and you wanna, you, so that fits right on this lip around here. So we're not gonna be touching on the bearing. Just like that. And there's both bearings out and the procedure is exactly the same for this top second so we'll just give you all a time lapse both sleeves are clear and that's going to do it for this one until the in installation video, which will be the next one that follows this video. But that's how they come out, and now we're gonna show you how to take them out of the, what I call the dog bone. So with this one, you just have to push out the sleeve. There's no cap on it. Next thing is gonna be popping out these seals. So the procedure is going to be different for this piece because as you can see it slims down really hard here in the middle. That's because it's wider here than in the middle so we can't use the push through technique. We have to use the pull out technique. The easiest way to make this work is to get out all the needles on the inside so you can grab this edge right here with your puller. This is our bearing puller. It was, uh, we got it off Amazon. It's got a bunch of these little guys on it. Here's the full kit. There. So what I'm doing now is I have a wrench on this section right here. And then this top um, 10 mil here and I'm expanding it to fit into this top race right there in the bearing because you don't want to do the back race because that's the one that's pushed up against the intersection. You don't want to scar the inside because the sleeve here still has to go all the way through and if you scar it, it'll catch and it'll potentially be damaged. Damaged suspension is not easy to replace or cheap. Open this open in here because I want it to fill as much of this space as possible so that we can keep it from breaking. So now, if you're going to do this, you might want to take one of these legs and hook it underneath the edge of the um, vise here just to give you a little bit of extra security. You can use a set of soft jaws, but I found that they kind of slip too easily and we're heating up and we don't want to potentially burn it. So get that tightened up in there. And while he's heating it up, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the rest of the puller. So this is the rest of the puller here. There's a big nut on top that's for adjusting everything. So I'm gonna adjust this looser and then there's internal threads inside that. I don't know how well y'all can see that, that I'm gonna thread. Here, let me give you all a little bit higher angle here. There. And I'm going to thread onto the top of this, just like that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to adjust this down. So these legs can, for right now, be wherever you need them to be on the edge of the bearing. But as soon as you start pulling the bearing out, you're going to have to move them to where they're not on this inside portion, you need them to just be on the outside so you don't impede the movement of the bearing. So when you're doing this, you want to put a small 12 millimeter on this 
top right there. And then you're gonna take just an adjustable crescent. I'm not sure the size, um, just cause we haven't really used anything but the adjustable crescent, but I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. So you're just gonna tighten this up. And if you heard that sound, that's the bearing coming out. It, you know, it really doesn't take a lot to do this the right way. We have messed it up. But we have messed it up once you have time. All right, so now we're coming onto that situation where it's getting, um, where it's hitting the legs. So we're gonna move the legs away from the bearing. Always helps to have another set of hands in the garage. So I've got Papamoto's out here, giving me a big hand. And there's our bearing, came right out, no problem. So now we're gonna flip it over and the procedure is the same. Hey guys, I just got finished, me and my dad, um, recording what I, well, I thought I was recording the swing arm bearing. Bearings coming out, but um, I forgot um, to hit the record button. So I'm just gonna give you guys a brief overview. Um, hopefully it doesn't ruin this for anybody that that's what they were looking for specifically. Um, it was the same procedure as the first bearings um, with the push through method. We took the, uh, 19 millimeter socket and the 27 and we pushed them through into each other. Um, I'm kind of bummed because there were some pretty satisfying pops that we got out of that. Um, and then with this side, you've got the seal and then you've got these um, here with a washer, this interesting um, washer with bearings in it and another washer. Um, and then on the inside portion, you just have a um, gasket there, a seal to keep out everything. Um, I'm sorry that I missed that. It's totally on me. It's my fault. I'm sorry, but that happens sometimes and I'm just gonna push through it. It's, it's the exact same procedure, so don't be scared. Um, make sure you use lots of heat. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. It's the exact same method, so don't feel stressed that I didn't record it. I forgot. I, I turned off the record button after we did the dog bone and I just forgot to hit it again. So that's going to be the end of the video. Unfortunately, I don't want this to be a super long video for anybody that's, you know, watching this as a last resort on how to get the bearings out. Um, I'm, again, I'm sorry that I missed it. I feel really bad. Um, I hope you guys aren't too mad at me. Um, but thanks for watching and I'll see all of you guys in the next video, which will just be putting in the bearings and I'll try and record all of it. Um, until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.